Hello, everybody. This is Pastor Tom welcoming you to another study in the Word. Oh, man. We're getting into our third session on deliverance. And we're talking about, um, uh, you know, progressing in deliverance. This is a really what we're doing is we're, we're teaching you principles so you can gain more and more freedom and get delivered from any kind of evil uh, spirit or evil attack of the enemy. And we're doing it in a biblical way. We're teaching you biblical principles so that progressively you can get freer and freer and help others to get free. So uh, today I'm going to talk to you just for a little bit about exercising our authority in Christ because we have been given authority through Jesus to use his name to exercise authority over all the principalities and powers and rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places, no matter how big, who they are. You know, the devil likes to make a big deal out of this. Oh, I'm such a mean, bad demon. I've got, you know, I'm so mean. I'm going to hold you in bondage. The truth is, they are all defeated foes. They are all paralyzed. They are all whipped because of what Jesus did. I want to start our study today in Colossians chapter 1, if you'll turn over there, please. And I hope that you're uh, going with me again. Uh, take down the scriptures that I give you. Go over the scriptures. Confess them. We learned about the principle of confession last uh, time. And begin to study them, meditate on them, because faith cometh by what? Hearing, hearing by the word of God. Speak the scriptures, the promises I'm giving you. Um, Go through the Word of God and mark everywhere that you see something about deliverance that, that, that pertains to your deliverance. Let's get into the Word of God. Colossians chapter 1, verse 12. We want to start there. This is a awesome and wonderful scripture. It says, Giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who has delivered us from the power of darkness, and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through the blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn uh, of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven, that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things. And by him all things confess, uh, all things consist. I want you to notice here out of the Amplified Bible, uh, in verse 13, it says this The Father has delivered and drawn us to himself out of the control and the dominion of darkness, and has transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. Now, I want you to notice again, verse 13, out of the King James Version. It says this, Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of God's dear Son. Nobody has ever accused me of being an English scholar. <laughs> no jokes, please. But I do know enough about the English language to know that half is past tense. Say that with me hath delivered us. What does that mean to you? That means that he has already done it. He has already taken you as a child of God out of the power of darkness and has translated you into the kingdom of his love. This is not something that's going to happen. This is something that already has happened. He has already translated us out of Satan's power and translated us into God's kingdom under his rule. So the devil has absolutely no legal right to torment you as a child of God. None. This is what you must understand. I want you to say that with me. I have already. Say it. I have already been delivered from all power of the devil. I have been delivered out of darkness, and I have been translated into God's kingdom, the kingdom of his love. The devil must 
let go of God's property in Jesus name this is a finished fact folks this is not some kind of fairy tale this is a finished fact Satan knows it demons know it the problem is many of God's people don't know it and God has told us this so that we can exercise our God-given authority over the enemy now go to Ephesians chapter 1 while you're there just turn to Ephesians chapter 1 and look at if you will please starting at verse 15 Ephesians chapter 1 and let's read verses 15 all the way down through chap, uh, the end of the, the chapter, verse 23. And then let's also read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, because really it's, it's expressing the same thought. Let's read, starting at verse 15. I will read out of the Amplified Bible again, please. It says this, For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and, and the love toward all the saints, God's people, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, for I always pray to God, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, that he may grant you a spirit of wisdom and revelation of the insight into the mysteries and secrets in the deep and intimate knowledge of him, by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light, so that you can know and understand the hope to which he has called you, and how rich is the glorious inheritance of the saints set apart ones. And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited surpassing greatness of his power in us, in and for us, who believe, as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him in his own right hand in heavenly places, far above, listen now, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and every name that is named, above every title that can be confirmed, and only in this age, in this world, not only in this age, in, in this world, excuse me, but also in the age in the world that is to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church, a headship exercised throughout the church, which is the body, his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. For in, the, in, in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with himself. Chapter 2, verse 1. And you, I want to stop right here and I want you to say that. That means me. Say it again. That means me. And you, and you, who were quickened or made alive when you were dead, slain by your trespasses and sins, in which at one time you walked habitably, you were following the course and fashion of this world, were under the sway of the tendencies of the present age, following the prince of the power of the air, you were obedient to and under the control of the demon spirit that constantly works in the sons of disobedience, the careless, the rebellious, the unbelievers who go against the purposes of God. Among those, we as well as you once lived, you did but no longer, see, you once lived and conducted yourselves in the passion of your flesh, our behavior governed by corrupt sensual nature, obeying the impulses of the flesh and the thoughts of the mind, our cravings dictated by our senses and our dark imaginings. We were then by nature the children of God's wrath and heirs of his indignation with the rest of mankind. But God, so rich in his mercy, because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love for which he loved us, even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ himself and the new life for which he has quickened for uh, him for. It is by grace, his favor and mercy, which he, we did not deserve, that you are saved, delivered from judgment, and made partakers of Christ's salvation. Now notice, Verse 8, verse 6, and he raised us up together with him and made us to sit down together with him, joint seating with him in heavenly sphere, heavenly places, by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus the Messiah, the anointed one.
I want that to sink in. The Bible says right here that Jesus Christ rose victorious over death, hell, and the grave. He rose and was seated in heavenly places far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. That would have been exciting enough. But it says that when you accepted Jesus Christ, you are literally raised to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. This means because he is the head of the body and we are his body, this means that all the principalities and powers are underneath his feet. And therefore, because we're in his body, all the principalities and powers are underneath our feet. That's what Jesus has done for us. Now, I said a lot there. I want you to read this chapter and read the, the second chapter, the verses I just read, over and over, and ask God to give you understanding. That's a spiritual prayer. And he's praying for their understanding to be enlightened about this, that Satan is underneath his feet. But yes, we are partakers with him of what he did. So Satan is underneath our feet. He has no right to rule over you. His power has been stripped. His power has been broken. You have authority over him. He's underneath your feet, and therefore you are a victorious, praise God, Christian now. See, the devil doesn't want you to know that, but it's true. You have already been raised to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. The devil's underneath your feet. I want you to say that. I have been raised. Say it. Principle of confession again. I have been raised to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Say it. Satan and all demons are underneath my feet. Now, this is why. It says, and I want you to turn there, Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. This is why we have authority over devils and we can cast them out. Mark chapter 16 verse 15 tells us this. Speaking of his disciples, he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel or the good news to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues, they shall take up serpents, if they, did, if, they, if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them, they shall lay hands on the sick. So, so then after the Lord had spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and set in the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with these signs following. Now go to Luke chapter 10. Go to Luke chapter 10. So we can see that Jesus provided us and commissioned us with his authority. His authority is above all authority. And one of the signs that we are to exercise is to cast out devils. It's very simple. You will cast out devils. When I take people through deliverance, I like them to be part of the process. Because you see, when you begin to exercise um, authority over Satan in your own life, and you get delivered from a few things, you're going to become a tiger. You're going to become a strong warrior for Christ. And you're going to give the devil fits, I'm telling you. Some of the people that are listening to me are going to be so, the devil is going to be so angry. And he's going to rue the day that he ever messed with you because you are going to become such a mighty warrior for Christ. It will literally raise his kingdom. You'll knock his kingdom down everywhere you go because you're going to have, you have suffered so much from being underneath his hand that when you get set free and you learn, you, you can do that. You can set other people free. You will, you'll just run around getting people set free left and right. That's what I really desire. That's what God desires. Luke chapter 10. It's very interesting. Look down at verse 17. Luke chapter 10, down at verse 17 says this. And the 70, Jesus has sent them out, you know, with the commission. It says, the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. It's through the name of Jesus that every devil is subject. Every devil is subject to Jesus Christ through his name. All of them. Doesn't make any difference who they are, what they are, how big they make you think they are. 
How much power you think they have? No, 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 no. No, listen. The seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning falling from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power or authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power or the authority of the devil, and nothing shall by any means harm you. We have authority over all, not some, not some. You are a disciple of the Lord. You have authority over all the power of the devil. You do. I do, but you do. And therefore, because we have authority over all devils, we can cast them out. Jesus exercised total 100% authority over every demon spirit. It doesn't make any difference how many there were. In Mark chapter 5, the madman of Gadara, he met him. The Bible says that this man, he made his home in the tombs. He apparently had been uh, abused severely when he was a child, probably in the occult realm. Uh, the Bible says that this man made his home in the, in the tombs. He cut himself. He would scream. He would he would go into these fits. Uh, he would run around at night. They tried to chain him. He had supernatural power. He could break the chains because of the demon power. The the man was totally out of his mind. And Jesus saw this man, and he ran to Jesus and he began to worship him and say. And Jesus told these devils. He said, he said, come out of this man. Now listen. This man was totally demonized. He had 2,000 devils. When Jesus told these demons to come out, this man, this, Jesus asked this man, what, he asked the devil, what's your name? He said, Legion, for we are many. Now, a lot of people get afraid when they start talking about Legion. All it means is that there was many devils in the man. It doesn't make any difference how many devils there was. There was 2,000 devils in Jesus, or excuse me, 2,000 devils in this man. It didn't bother Jesus. Jesus simply said to this demon-possessed man, he said to Legion, Go! 2,000 of them came out of this man, went into these pigs that were walking down, the, that were over there being herded, and the pigs ran into the sea, the Bible says, and were drowned. Because, you know, that's what devils do. They try to torment people and cause them to commit suicide and things like that. One simple command from Jesus Christ, and every one of these 2,000 devils left the man. And the Bible says that later they found this guy clothed, and in his right man he, mind he was set free, and he became a mighty evangelist going back and giving his testimony to all these people who came out later when Jesus came back, and they all were healed. This is a story that I like to tell to people that have been uh, somehow uh, taken over or hurt by demon power. It's a very simple fact, and it is a fact, my dear brother and sister, that Jesus Christ has authority. But it's also a fact, I want you to listen now, it's also a fact that you and me as Christians now have the same authority. When we use the name of Jesus, it's just as if Jesus Christ himself was sitting there right with us and he was giving the command. Okay? So you must understand that. Paul used the name of Jesus. He was uh, being harassed one day by a little girl that had a spirit of divination, a python spirit. And she was an oracle. They called her the Oracle of Delphi. She would sit up in the in the in the tombs and what what the satanic cult did that that used to uh, use her to make money they would take her and they would cause her to stare at a at a a, a, a snake and the snake you know supposedly anyway would hypnotize her and these demons would come into her and give her power to read people's fortunes and that's all cor cor course all occultism and it is, is forbidden by the word of God. And so this little girl, she would sit up there. Then after this experience, she would sit up there. She was really famous. She would sit up there, you know, in the, in the cliff. She would crouch down. And people would come into the city. And she would read their fortune and they would give money. And they were making a lot of money. Well, Paul, knowing something was wrong, turned to the spirit, he, it says, and said, in the, in the name of Jesus, come out of her. And in the same hour it came out. 
she was totally set free and, and, and all hell broke loose because Paul had destroyed these people's, this, this, this satanic cult's ability to make money in one command of the name of Jesus. You know, the Bible says that Philip went down to a place called Samaritan in, in the book of Acts and he preached Christ unto them. And it said many of these people had demons and they came out screaming as he preached Christ unto them. And the reason for it was there was a man who was a famous sorcerer, and he's famous not only in the Bible, but he's famous in history. His name was Simon Magnus. He was one of the, the most well-known black magicians of his time, a very satanic man involved in some of the darkest forms of black magic. The Bible says that the whole city of Samaritan, which is really, were half Jews. They were people that had, had mixed with these other heathen people. And the Bible totally, in the Old Testament, told them, don't you do that. But they did it anyway. They married into these heathen people who practiced all kinds of forms of idolatry and, Id and idol worship and black magic of the worst forms. And so Simon Magnus, who controlled the whole city through his sorcery, the Bible said, had controlled this whole city. And he probably was very wealthy because of it, and he probably made a lot of money, see, because of it. But when, when Philip came down and started preaching Christ to them, these demons started coming out of these people, and they were set free. The apostles literally came down there and started a church. The whole city basically turned to God. There was great joy in the city when this happened. And these people were set free from all of their occult experiences. Another place in the Bible we have where the Word of God was growing so strongly, the idol worship was coming down. They were breaking their 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 um, you know their their idols and bringing their. They begin to bring all of their books and all of their occultic items that they had been studying uh, from the occult realm and the occult world, and they burnt them. That's how great the word of God prevailed. It literally took over the whole city. You see, most people who've been in these cults, and, and I'm sure that the same thing was true, you know, for the, some of these people, they were told that they could never be free. They were told these demons had a hold of them, that if they ever try to get free, you know, they'd get killed, or the demons would kill them, or they would commit suicide, or the cult would come after them, or the child abuser would come after them, or whatever it was. A thousand different things that go through people's minds, you see, that they've been told. But I have a good news for you. And the good news is, is that all is a lie. The Bible says Satan is a liar, and he's the father or the originator of a liar. And all demons lie. That's all they can do is lie. And you're, whole, you're held in bondage when you believe a lie. But when you begin to start believing the truth, and the truth is that Jesus Christ will set you free. He'll set you free just like he did the madman of Gadara. He'll set you free just like he did the people of Samaritan. He'll set you free just like that little prophetess of Delphi who was possessed by a spirit of divination. It doesn't make any difference how much or what has happened to you. Jesus Christ has the power to set you free. It doesn't matter how many demons somebody has. Jesus Christ has the power to set them free. But we must exercise that a power in the name of Jesus. And so I would like to do some of that today if I could. We would like to do some praying and we would like to do some confessing and we would like to do some commanding and we would like to do some things, praise God, that maybe you've never done before. But we are going to do them because it's time for us to start standing against the enemy and all the wiles of darkness. And so what we're going to do is we're going to exercise our God-given authority. And we're going to exercise our God-given authority and begin to command Satan's kingdom broken over us. And therefore, I want you to repeat after me, the kingdom of darkness, say it, the kingdom of darkness is a literal spiritual kingdom. But say that God's kingdom of light is a literal spiritual kingdom too and is more powerful than the kingdom of darkness. Say this, the kingdom of darkness was institu instituted by Satan and his host of fallen angels. Say it. 
say this though, but Satan is an angel that was thrown out of heaven and God is more powerful and God's angels are more powerful than any satanic powers. We know that Satan's kingdom is working in the social kingdom, the culture, the entertainment, the language, the marriage, the families, the entertainment kingdom, Hollywood, movies, uh, music. We know it's in the environmental kingdom. We know he works for the, for the economical kingdom, the governmental kingdom, the educational, the technical kingdom, the religious, uh, humanistic, atheist, anti-God kingdom. We know that. We know he works for the occult world. We know he works through religion, religious spirits. But God has given us the power to expose every single one of these tactics, and we're going to do it. Satan has set himself up of the God of this world system who blinds the minds of them that do not believe. At least the light of the glorious gospel of Christ should shine unto them. But we have the glorious gospel of Christ, and it's shining, and it's going to break every dark power in your life in Jesus' name. Satan is a defeated foe. Satan and his demonic cohorts have the ability to oppress and terrorize humanity, but they have not the ability to torment you anymore because you are no longer under his control. You are part of the kingdom of God. You've been raised to sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, far above all principalities and powers and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. The kingdom of, of darkness has all kinds of things to it. But the principalities, the powers, the rulers of the darkness of this world, the spiritual wickedness in high places are now bound. We take authority over demonic spirits. We take authority over Satan. We take authority over every principality, every power, every ruler of the darkness of this world, every spiritual wickedness in high place. We break all the connections that it may have down all the way to the persons that's listening to me. We thank you that the kingdom of darkness is exposed now, and we have authority over every principality and power. And so we break the power of every single one of you and command you to loose them and let them go in Jesus' name. And we thank you, Lord God, that now you are ministering to us we take authority and we bind i want you to say this with me we bind all demons and devils in jesus name we come against all spirits of the underworld in jesus name say it with me say we come against all spirit birds in the name of jesus all spirit horsemen and horse horses and horsemen in the name of jesus all familiar spirits in the name of Jesus. Say it. We come against all familiar spirits in the name of Jesus. All unclean spirits in the name of Jesus. All evil spirits in the name of Jesus. All seducing spirits in the name of Jesus. All fallen archangels in the name of Jesus. We come against Lucifer. We come against the devils and Satan, Beelzebub, adverse adversary, Belial, dragon, serpent, God of this world, prince of this world, accuser of the brother, the enemy, the tempter, the wicked one. We come against all names of Satan, all bondages of Satan. And we come against you in Jesus' name. Say this with me. We serve you notice. You must leave us now. We are free. And whom the Son has set free is free indeed. In Jesus' name. In our next session, we are going to go on and pray some more. We're going to actually pray some renouncing prayers, some break generational curses, we're going to do all of those type of things as we go in this uh, time of deliverance. But if you had a hard time getting through this one, go back and watch it again until you can pray all the way through. And you get, you know, once you, once you get all the way through this, move on to the next video. This is a progressive time of deliverance. Till next time, God bless you.